So, Robbie, um, 25 years ago, something happened in our lives, something pretty important, something that kind of defines us a lot, Yeah. doesn't it? Uh, yeah. And what was that? What happened 25 years ago today? Well, it was the beginning of Eastgate. It was. That's how long Eastgate's been around. You and I had... I'd like to say we were born 25 years <laughs> ago. We were born. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it was uh, something that happened well after that. <laughs> Yeah, it was. We came down to Florida from Indiana, had had a really rough time at what we've called the Crazy Church, uh -huh. and uh, tried to find a place to fit in, and finally decided we would just see if we could do something different in our living room, and that's yeah. where it all started. You yeah. and I, and a handful, and my brother Riley, and yeah. Lynn, and mm. a couple neighbors. Yeah, the Praethers. Praethers. <laughs> They're still <laughs> around, still if anyone today. knows them. And, uh, in the cove, uh, yeah, Panama in a little City, thousand square foot house. Yes, and we all crammed in there with, yeah. And so we had uh, twenty adults and twenty kids crammed into that house, and it became a kind of a thing for you and I of um, trying to the, we'd lay bets on what piece of furniture was going to be broken. Yeah. By the end of the service, by yeah. the end of the teaching or or the get together. Yeah. But those were good days. They were they? good days. I mean, um, <clears throat> we uh, developed community. I think with uh, the handful of people that were there and uh, it was something that felt right. I it think. did feel right. It was, it was, it was, there was a, a beauty and an innocence to that. And again, we've talked about yeah. before how Eastgate is a church by accident. That was yeah, we have that recorded, I think, in a lot of places, yeah. the whole story of how it we're happened. We're probably sick of hearing that. Yeah, thing. so we won't maybe go into all the details, but yeah, basically it was born out of a, you know, a need, a desire to connect with the body of Christ again, yeah. but... We'd been hurt really badly yeah. by church and we thought, but we believe in it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. I mean, we were hurt, right. but we still believe in it. Jesus Jesus commanded us to, to form together in this community for a reason. And we see what it is after all these years. But yeah. 25 years later, here we are. Yeah. But we went from uh, our living room to the Promenade Mall. Yeah. And those were some fun days. Those were, yeah. I mean, you what do you remember place. about the Promenade Mall? What it, like when you close your eyes and you imagine it, what do you, what comes to mind? You know, there's a lot of different textures in that building. They really were. <laughs> and and I, I don't know why that's the first thing that, that comes to my mind. There were mirrors and we tried to cover the mirrors with thatch. thatch. So we had the thatch in a lot of places. We had black and white, there were black and white tiles on the floor. There were some carpeted areas. Yeah. There was just a lot of different surfaces there um, that when you walked in, it was just it kind was, of it was, it was an, an explosion. assaulter. Yeah, an, yeah. assault. <laughs> an assault on the senses immediately. Mm, but it felt homey to us. And I remember <laughs> that was important to you to for it to feel comfortable. We'd been in our living room and yeah. we, we got this building um, through a friend and um, and we said, well, we still want it to feel like our living room somehow. And yeah. that was kind of why the couches started there. And that's kind of why we putting, still have them. Started putting couches in, started put, propping surfboards up in yeah. the corners of the yeah. wall. That was because I had gone surfing one day and had uh, <clears throat> was, didn't want to go all the way home with the surfboard. So I just dropped it off at, <laughs> uh, dropped it off at Eastgate. And when I went back to get it and I was looking at it in the corner, I thought, well, this is right. This, yeah. this looks this really feels... cool here. Let's just leave it here. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, uh, we were living in town. And so you yeah. have to make the trek. Um, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember we were taking poetry and taping it up to the walls and stuff. Yeah, that was actually after the coffee house started, which was fairly soon after the church started. 97, I think. So a year or two after Eastgate started. Maybe only a year. Maybe it was 96. I feel like it was fairly house. quickly. Javaluya was the 90s. Oh, yeah. yeah. Coffee houses mm -hmm. were popular. Uh, and and Javaluya <clears throat> ended up becoming kind of a, a <clears throat> hub for the scene kids. I mean, it yeah. really, and, you know, it gave them a spot to to go and a lot of them were Christ followers and needed some sort of outlet. We recognized that right away. And yeah, and because of what we'd been through um, ourselves, we wanted to make sure there was no agenda. You yeah. know, we didn't um, charge anybody for anything, no, we didn't. Uh, any right. of the drinks. Um, did we, we had a jar for the bands if people wanted to donate to pay the band, yeah. uh, but mostly they just wanted a reason to play. And yeah. uh, so. And those were um, crazy times. Though. Yeah, they were. I mean, I felt like for, for a little while there, when it was getting really popular, like I could count every Friday night, I would count on the fact that the police were going to show up and I was going to have yeah. to try to say, look, man, these kids, they mean well. They yeah. Don't, you know, There's no not, alcohol here. That's right. And, um, uh, unless somebody from the. Yeah. VF came VFW over. VFW <laughs> next door. We had one guy walk in. I remember 
being behind the counter just walk, watching this one guy walk in and just kind of doing a dance all by himself and he just was loving it he just yeah. enjoyed it but there um, was a lot of uh, a lot of memories from that yeah. a lot of crazy times we burned up a lot of uh, sound equipment during that time yeah and uh, it was expensive for the church in some ways yeah. uh, because of that but you know uh, what and, and it's that sort of thing some of our best friends we've met yes through that. you know the, the the browns came to the coffee house first yeah. mike and darby brown mike and darby i'll they, never forget yeah. i would i used to run the counter i had to learn how to make coffee drinks and um and and so I never felt really in my element anyway, because I wasn't a coffee drinker. And I remember Darby walking up and I'm thinking, oh, here's, this looks like maybe someone's parents or the band. And she was, looked very serious. And I said, what can I get you to drink? And she goes, I really don't want any coffee. I want to know about the church. And I just remember feeling like I had to kind of stand up straight. And, <laughs> and what do we tell them? What do we say? How and we pretend like we're respectable. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so she came for information about Eastgate and then they visited after they that. Visited and that was, you know, and again, I was re trying to read their faces. It was one yeah. of these times I was talking about the tithe and and how yeah you know we're under we're not under the Old Testament law and I was kind of going into that whole thing and I was trying to read their faces the first time they were there mm -hmm. and I was absolutely convinced that yeah. they were like nah this is not gonna yeah. be this is not for us or whatever and yet they were so kind afterwards and they've yeah you know they've never been able to shake us we've, yeah, that's right. <laughs> they've been such still a blessing. volunteering for us yeah Mike got involved board. in the in the sound ministry and stuff like that and it was right around the same time that uh, Lance and Liz Livingston yeah. started uh, coming and to the problem. And he called to inquire about Eastgate. That's right. Um, he probably kept me on the phone came. for about a half an hour, just going through yes. all the different things, wanting answers about and which was good. Yeah. Yeah. I've always appreciated someone who wants to know yeah. more about the church yeah. that they're going to yeah, be both involved in. He's been keeping that. us safe for 25 years. I know. I know. LA, it's amazing. A uh, cop came in and just mm -hmm. really took. And then their daughter, Rachel, was yeah. a babe in arms. She remember? was little. She was she little, was, little. Mm -hmm. I think maybe a year or two old yeah. at, at that. Yeah. When they started coming. Now uh, she's going to be getting married soon. Yeah. So it's amazing the things we've seen. Yeah. Our own kids <laughs> were, I was trying to figure it out, like six eight, nine, and 10 or something like that so um, when we started. Our granddaughter, our oldest yeah. granddaughter's age around that. Yeah, when, so they uh, were still pretty they little. started and just the other day, Sammy was working on, on changing the yeah. slides for them on a worship Wednesday. That's right. And Janelle was mentioning how this is... Uh, good yeah. Friday. I think it was Good Friday. That's right. Because we talked about how That's the right. Ripmans said something like... Our Good Friday service, service is in the, in the hands, of hands of a seven-year-old. Seven yeah. Which is perfectly appropriate for yeah. this Yeah. Yeah. We've had a lot of yeah. good times. I feel like we've been going to the beach and incorporated beach meetings in from the beginning. I mean, yeah. I remember when there was like 40 of us that met in the promenade mall days mm -hmm. and we would go down to uh, the beach just after church. We'd just it was say, just hey, casual, everybody. we're going down, we'll see you there. And sometimes we do baptisms, but mm -hmm. other times we did baptisms in an unusual place. Yes. Got in trouble for it at the promenade we mall. We did, if any of you have been to the promenade mall, it is still there. Yeah. And right down the middle, right down the prom promenade are fountains every little yeah. bit. And there was one right beside ours and we said, what doth prohibit us from <laughs> having a water. baptism? What prohibit us? <laughs> made sense to us at yeah. the time. So what? Candy Drake at the time yeah. got baptized. Our and, son Daniel uh, was Daniel baptized there. Baptized Remember, everybody said it was very cold. Yeah, um, well, it was freezing. You, you I was got in, the in there, yeah. It was terribly so. cold. And then I got a call the next day from the from the manager of the mm -hmm. mall. And all of it makes sense to me now from her perspective. <laughs> but as a kid, I was like, what's the problem? You, <laughs> We're not you check anything. the water and see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think I was, was told in other... no uncertain terms that our church was not allowed to perform baptisms yes. in the fountains anymore. So. <laughs> so we're done. All done. Was, but but we, got a lot of, we had a lot of documentation <laughs> of it having happened. <laughs> we did. It yeah. was a lot of fun. Though. It seemed convenient. It seemed like the right thing. It did. But um, we yeah. We had uh, Daniel Prather was kind of working with the youth. Yeah, and the Brian little Metz older kids. came in mm -hmm. as our youth pastor, and then Dustin Bryson and Cole Schneider. Yep. And we've just had some really great oh my gosh, people yeah. over the years working with our youth and working in ministry with us. It's been a lot of fun. It really has. I have a lot of good memories. And then I remember mm -hmm. still when we realized that there was a hundred something people in that tiny little promenade mall building. Yeah. And I can still remember that board meeting when everybody was trying to say, you know, I suddenly, it dawned on me. I realized it was an intervention. <laughs> Everything was going along fine, and I was just joking like I normally do. And people are talking about how many people, I was like, yeah, yeah, isn't that funny? And, and all of a sudden, it dawned on me. They were all telling me we had to have a different building. We had like, to Rob, it's time. 
I just, and it's I time, just, Rob. I just remember just feeling this panic. He says, like, no! <laughs> Don't take me! <laughs> but we yes. did. We found a good spot down the street where we are now at the Peach yeah. Walk Center. We started with it's just a little It's actually on the same here. road, just a yeah, few blocks down. down. And uh, got a really good deal on it. Still have a really good deal on the property. It's gone through a lot of um, changes since yeah. we got it. Uh, the way it is right now where a lot of the Sunday school classes are is kind of like what it was when we first got it. Yeah. But we tore all those walls out and we met in that room. Yeah. And then when we were able to move to the big room, then we put walls back up and made them Sunday school classes. <laughs> That's true. So. It was all, yeah, segregated <laughs> into offices that we took all out and then we had to put them all back in. Yes. I remember when we finally moved the last thing out of the Promenade Mall and I went in there, I was all by myself. And I just laid down on the floor. I was so sad to leave that place. You were I very was, attached to that. I was. I liked the simplicity. I liked when I, when we moved into a bigger building. I suddenly realized there was going to be uh, uh, rows. Well, <laughs> I, I I could envision that we would end up with rows of chairs, and I also realized that there was a level of of legitimacy mm. that would come with an expectation of a bigger mm -hmm. building and the stuff. And I didn't know that we had. I didn't yeah. know that I had that in me. I, it's not that I doubted anybody else, but I didn't right. know. Right, uh, it's honest, scary sometimes. <laughs> I mean, we're, we set out. We set out to do something that we had not experienced before. Yeah. We set out to do something that didn't involve the politics of church as usual. That didn't involve, you know, the the strong arm of religious structures yeah. with top down authoritarianism or things like things that we had experienced. Right. And, and by doing that, we didn't have really a roadmap to go on. We mm -hmm. just were trusting the Holy Spirit would lead us. And, and we just kept coming back to, we have these values. This is about loving God and loving people. And if it works, whatever we're going to do, if it works towards those values, we'll keep it. If it doesn't, we'll be free to jettison it and get rid of it yeah. if we need to. And we've been doing that. So honestly, it's, the, it's been a 25 year learning curve and we're not off the curve. No, we no. have not flattened that curve. No. Of all the curves that we're trying to flatten, we have not flattened our learning curve. I don't curve. want to discourage anybody <laughs> by telling them like, we're still a work in progress. Um, <laughs> but it's true. And I, I, I'm hoping it's built in flexibility um, yeah. because uh, as soon as we feel like we have something figured out, then, yeah. you know, it, it needs to be subject to change, I think, always. And, um, and I think maybe it's supposed to be like that. Yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, when you look at the early church, what kind of a roadmap did they have? Yeah, that's true. You know, they, they set out to follow the Holy Spirit to see how they could go about emulating what Jesus did, doing good and healing those who are oppressed of the devil. And that's been our goal all along. And yeah. so we've had a lot of years. of. We of, have. Um, but I just was thinking, though, back to the old building before we left it. We talked about how it looked and how different it was, but, yeah. um, and we didn't really bring all those things with us to the new building, no. but uh, there was a funny story that, um, that I wanted to mention too, that we had a friend who, who was coming there, she and her husband, and she, she was from Trinidad and grew up very, right. I never very knew properly. this, very proper, but she was just a very nice, easygoing wonderful, lady. Wonderful family. But there, but she looked at the decor because we had taken, like you said, poems from Javaluya and stuck broken them on the walls. We had broken skateboard. People kept breaking skateboards outside. And so we, oh, let's put them up on the wall. I don't know why. <laughs> we thought that was cool. Yeah, and at one point, nice. she, I forget how that came about. But. She had brought a friend oh, yeah. to church on, and, and, and explained, well, they rent this building, so they really have no you know, <laughs> say right. over this. They can't, you know, make it look nicer. And, I looked at her and I said, no, that's not true. We put, we all put this that in there. <laughs> and the look of dumbfounded shock on her face. Yes. That was pretty it was wonderful. Yeah, she had another thing she said about you too <laughs> later. She's the one who took me aside and said, you are the worst dressed person in this place. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, said, I don't think that's changed. <laughs> but uh, honestly, there's there's thought to that. Yeah. You know, if, if yeah. I'm the worst dressed person in the place, then the second best worst, the second worst dressed person's not going to feel that bad. There you go. <laughs> That's <is> right. So, <laughs> so but, it's by design. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? We'll go with that. Yeah. So, okay. So then we moved to where we are now. We've been there a long time. We've been there since 2001. Did 2002. Two? We moved into the big room mm -hmm. and it's undergone different changes over yeah. time. We mm -hmm. pulled the ceilings out and things but it's taken you know we've never been a church who's had a lot of money so yeah we can we do little things here and there but we you know here's the thing that i've been thinking about is that during this time of quarantine and we're all 
having to strip everything down to its bare essentials. And I'm reading a lot of articles about the church lately right now mm. that during this time, everybody's having to get back to the bare essentials. And I started thinking, you know, we've been doing this for <laughs> yeah. 25 years now, trying to strip it back to the bare essentials. We've never had a lot of money to work with, which has kept us on a, mm. on a very streamlined, very uh, grassroots mm. home style type of church. But we've had some, you know, our kids have all grown up being part of that church and yeah. several of them have come back and are, are still part of it. Yes. And uh, that's been pretty special. Da my daughter just uh, the other day when we were talking to Janelle and she was saying that, uh, you know, she's third generation yeah. uh, ministry and then her daughter's working on the yeah. on the changing the slides like she did when she was a child. And yeah. there's something to that. There's yeah. something that struck me. I beautiful. never really thought of it that way. Um, but the we're way God orchestrates it. stuff because you could sit down and think, well, they planned this out or whatever, and we really didn't. No. But it's kind of cool to step back and look at look at the trail that mm -hmm. we've been on and see all mm -hmm. the different places that it's gone, the hills and the valleys, and yeah. and the various people that have walked with us throughout our history, yeah. the stories that got intermingled with ours and ours with theirs. And yeah. It's been a beautiful thing. It really has. It has. And uh, we were talking, we had a staff meeting this morning, a virtual staff meeting. And um, I mentioned on there, and it comes to mind now too, that these all these online services we've done lately, so many more. I mean, we broadcast live for a long time, but we've, we're doing more Facebook and things like that. It's like casting this really big net out there, um, not necessarily to unbelievers always, but of friends and people and family. That we haven't seen in oh, a long time. Oh my goodness. It's been and really nice, We've huh? remarked how there's generally at least two or three people from the old days back in the crazy church. Yeah. And, um, and then some family members here. And I'm like, what other place would we all have this opportunity to be together? And it feels like just, just this amazing community to me and I love it and and it's as close as we can get to you know being actually together yeah um, but just seeing their names and their comments and just like fun. oh it just it's, pretty it's fun. wonderful I've it is. been really appreciative that we've had that and it's temporary and uh, we talked a lot about too how we're all <laughs> most of the staff of East Gate are introverts yeah. um, but it didn't take long before we all missed the actual that's true person to person Nothing replaces Connection, that, does it? Yeah, that, that we used to get. Yeah. Well, we'll have so, it again. We'll get through we this will. time. We'll be stronger than ever. Yeah. God will bring us through. And all the lessons that we learn in this about what really is valuable and what's important, yeah. we'll take with us on into the next 25 years. That's right. That's right. So here we go. We got we got 25 years uh, uh, in. We've got 25 years in the books. And we've got... Uh, wide open horizons in front of us to see where God will lead us next, to That's see right. what God will do. And it's been beautiful to see all the different ways in which he's worked through people, people mm -hmm. that he's brought into our lives, even if it was for a season that yeah. were so significant and meaningful. I couldn't sit and name them all because I'd forget somebody, but yeah. it's been profound to me the way that it's been like this dance uh -huh. through these years where we've all kind of worked together, uh, We've kind of, you know, it's been a waltz at different times. We've been trading back and yeah. forth as we go. And and at times it's been kind of like a mosh pit. Yeah. Too. But <laughs> yeah. it's uh, been something he's been leading. Uh, he set the tune and brought us through and it's been it's been wonderful. And I'm looking forward to the years ahead of us. Me too. And, and you know, um, some people have said some very nice things to us about how much they appreciate Eastgate and the community. And um, we say this, but I just want to reiterate it, that that how much everyone means to us. They're our family, too. And that makes me tear me up. But, but, you know, they're, they mean a lot to us. There's, yeah. a, uh, there's a song that's done by Giants and Pilgrims that is thematic for me, mm -hmm. for Eastgate, called Breaking Love. If you ever get a ah, chance to hear yes. it. But it's the song that I think about my family and friends at the church that they're the thing that <laughs> I mean it's Eastgate that that gives me purpose in life and, yeah. and reminds me of why I'm putting one foot in front of the other why I do what I do uh, because it's the most beautiful thing that has ever happened in my life and uh, yeah I'm grateful to God that he put us on this journey me too me too it's the body of Christ it is well, this got emotional and weird. Oh, goodness. Oh, so sorry, everybody. Stop this. Stop <laughs> doing this. That's weird. All right. That's enough. Enough. Happy 25 years. Happy 25 years. To the next. To the next one. <laughs> Wash your hands now. Oh, yeah. Here's <laughs> my blood. You remind me of why I break my hands. You remind me.